Hi there, this is Vivs here. In this video, let's play with the for loop in IntelliJ. For the first step, I would like to demonstrate and make you guys comfortable with the for loop. For that, we are going to use the basic form of the for loop that we learned in the previous video. I'll make a variable, call it i, assign it a value of 0 and then put a semicolon without fail, have our condition where it says i less than 5 and then I'm going to have another semicolon and increment the value of i. And once I do this, inside the body, I'll just print hello world over here. Now when you run the program, you will notice that hello world is being printed 5 different times. Now I can change the value to 1 instead of 0, make the condition as less than equal to instead of less than and it is going to give me the same result when I run the program. I can even go the reverse, I can say i equals to 5 i is greater than 0 and then I can decrement the value of i instead of incrementing it and I can click run at the top again and this is going to give me the same result. In fact I can start at i equals to 4 I can say i is greater than equals to 0 and I can run the same for loop and it's going to print the same thing. I can start at a value such as 8 I can go to the value 4 and I can run the same thing again which will print hello world 5 times again. So the idea here is it doesn't matter what is the starting value of the variable i or what is the condition. What matters is how many times you execute the for loop. You can even start at i equals to say 16 and you can reduce i by 2 instead of 1 and you can click run at the top and this is going to print hello world a few more times I guess and that is because of the condition I have to make sure that i is 8 here click run at the top and this is going to print hello world 5 times again so it all depends on how you want to do it now let's take a more practical example of the for loop and try to understand how we can really use it in our applications so now we are going to learn how to use the for loop to print these kind of patterns that you see so the simplest way to start would be by using the print statement. Let's just write s out, hit return or enter on your keyboard, print one star and all you have to do now is print two stars and three stars respectively. So this would get the job done right. You can just click run at the top, click run here and you will notice the three patterns here. But what if you had to print 10,000 lines? Now that is where the for loop comes into the picture, right? So let's go to the second line here and notice that we have two stars being printed and then there is a new line which is why these three stars are printed on the next line. So I'm going to remove one of the stars here and use a print method over here in place of a print ln. Just copy it, add another star and then I will add a new line. To add a new line, I can simply write system.out.println. The blank version of println just prints a new line. So if I click run at the top and go here, notice that we see the same thing. That is because here we print one star, we are on the same line, we print another star and then we print a new line and then we print the three different stars. Let's split these three stars into individual print statements along with this new line at the end. So now to make things clearer, I have added some space. The first line prints a single star and a new line. These two print two stars on the same line and then they add a new line. These three will print three stars on the same line and then I have added another new line. Now this is where the for loop comes into the picture. Notice that we have three different print statements here that's doing the same thing. So we can replace these three with a single for loop. So I will just go at the top here and add a for loop that says int j equals to 0. You can call it whatever you want. I have called it j in this case. I'll say j is less than 3 and I will say j plus plus. And I'll just open the for loop and remove these three different print statements that I have. Instead I just need one of them. So I'll just control c, paste this inside, remove these three and there is our loop. Let's run this and confirm if this is going to work properly. So there you go, there are the three stars that are being printed because of this for loop. The same way I can go here at the top where I have two different print statements. I can replace them with a single for loop. So let me just copy this loop here and go and replace these two with the for loop. 
In this case, the condition, however, is going to be two because we just want two stars. Once again, you can click run and you will see the same result. Now at the first statement here, I can replace that with a for loop as well. I'll just add my for loop here, make the condition as j less than one so that it executes only once. And I will add a print ln at the end. So the idea here is to use a double for loop. Let me just show you how that works. I click run at the top and this time we have the for loop, the first one being executed once and then a new line, this for loop running two times, then a new line, this one runs three times and then a new line. If you observe carefully, you will notice that the for loop and this print line statement are being repeated several times. And what changes everywhere is just this value. It is first one, then it became two, then it became three, right? So this has become a special case called a nested for loop. We need this for loop and this statement to be repeated several times. And that is possible if we add one more for loop. So we are going to make one at the top and we'll call it int i equals to zero or int i equals to one since j here's one then it is two, then it is three. So we need to start at i equals to one and we need to go where i less than equals to three and we'll increase by one each time. And what I'm going to do is simply remove these two duplicate statements I have, take the third one here and put it inside this for loop and notice the condition here. I say j less than i this time. Now let's see what happens if I click run at the top, run hello world and we will see the same program over here. To understand how this works in a better manner, I have printed the values of i and j on the screen and I removed the star. So i starts at one. Notice the output here, it says one zero. So the value of i is one and the value of j is zero. The way this works is pretty simple. i starts at one, one is less than equals to three. The condition is true. This complete thing is going to be executed if the condition is true, right? And that would mean j is zero and the current value of j which is zero is less than the current value of i, which is one. The condition is true. So this print statement is executed giving you one and then it prints j on the same line and after j it prints a new line. And this code is executed giving you this blank space over here. Then the value of i has become two. Now i two less than equals to three, the condition is true. Once again, this loop is going to execute and this statement will also run, right? Now remember that j resets or starts at zero again. So zero is less than one, zero is less than two, which is what you see here, two zero and two one. That's the value of i and j and then the blank line. And then the for loop executes three times starting at i is three, j is zero, j becomes one, j becomes two. And the print ln statement is added at the end over here. So hopefully you guys have understood how I took a lot of repeating code and I compressed that into a dual for loop. Now based on the values of i and j, I can control how this for loop is going to display. Let's click run at the top and see if it's gonna print it four times. So if I say i is 10 over here, oops, not 410, just click run at the top and we should be able to see now a huge asterisk list here. So feel free to experiment with this loop and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day.